The Tau codex has released and I'm happy that they're using the Tau sept colors again. Instead of the white that they've used on the boxes now, the orange ochre color, I prefer it much, much more because it's also what you see in Dawn of War when you play Tau. And so I'm gonna paint that particular Tau paint scheme here. Take a look at the crisis suit here. I spray painted him white because I want to start with a bright base and then darken it up a little bit more. But starting with white gives you a lot more opportunity to work with contrast paints as well. So the first paint I'm using is Contrast Wildwood and it's a dark brown, which I'm going to use to paint all the parts that are usually black on Tau. And I'm using dark brown because in the Tau Sept, a lot of it is just ochres and browns and oranges. And I feel that a cold black uh, might look cool, but I feel that a dark brown is better. It also usually what they paint the Tau Fire Warriors suits with. So the armor plates are ochre and uh, sort of the, the jumpsuit that they are wearing, that's all brownish, a very dark brown. And I want to replicate that on the, the Crisis suits and all the other battle suits because then we have a more coherent army. Now for the armor plates I'm using Jokero Orange and Jokero Orange is way brighter than the Tau Ochre that you see in the artwork or the Tau Ochre paint that you can also get. But I try to paint in such a way that I don't have to highlight because highlighting takes quite a lot of time and it is a pretty tedious job I find that doesn't have a lot of room of error. You can hit something and then you have to paint that other part over and you have to shade it again. You have to highlight that part again and then you go back to where you were left off. So I prefer to start with a paint that is brighter than it's supposed to end up. So this is way too orange, way too bright. But if I wash this afterwards and I darken it down, then I don't need to do any highlighting because it's already so bright. And that way I skip a whole step of painting and it just helps to get your army on the table much quicker. Wow, I, I really don't envy Tau players who paint crisis suits assembled. I would never again attach the arms before I'm done with painting because there's so much stuff in there to paint and you just can't reach it with these arms in the way. So leave the arms off, paint everything and then glue the arms on. By the way, if you've hit anything of the brown part that you painted with Contrast Wildwood, you can use Rhinox Hide to touch it up. That way you don't have to paint the base layer again and go over it with Contrast Paint. It'll save you quite a lot of time. And I guarantee you, if you paint them assembled, you're gonna hit the wrong parts. Um, but we're moving on. Next up are a couple of details in red. And I'm taking a pretty bright red, in this case Mephiston red. And I'm just gonna start picking out some details like this panel here on his armor. And again, Mephiston Red, it is really bright red, but that's what I want. I'm going to wash this later with a darker shade, and then it will darken down the red details as well. So now I'm just gonna go all over the model and just pick out little bits and parts. Now, just to be clear, I used red because I want to have a warm looking miniature with reds, browns, oranges, those kind of colors, and nothing too bright. So no blues, greens, or yellows. Uh, if you want, you can of course replace the red for something different. I wouldn't do it because it completely changed the look of the miniature. But of course, your miniatures use the paints that you want to have. And you can always try it out. Put on some blue, don't like it, switch back to red and continue. Now, I think that Tau really needs some decals. Uh, with these decorations, like a few points of red here, it already looks better. But Tau needs these decals because they are so, I don't know, so important for Tau because they're so unique to Tau. And so I'm just gonna apply a couple of decals over here and I'm just gonna use some micro sole. This is a glue that also helps to soften the decal, which helps to uh, form it more towards the miniature. And I know a lot of people hate decals, but I think that might be because they started using decals with Space Marine shoulder pads and it's just hard to use a flat decal on a curved surface like that. If you have flat surfaces like these or like a tank, it's much easier. So oh, just move it around with your brush until it's in the right spot and then don't touch it anymore. And I'll put another one here on the top of his head. So I've got this decal adhesive. It's like a glue, but there's like a solvent in there that makes them more pliable, these decals. And so it does both. It sticks it on there better and just easier to work with the decals as well. And just Get it in the right spot and don't touch it anymore. That's the biggest thing. Once it's there, don't touch it. And the last one, this little decal over here. 
I think I'll put it on the side of his rocket launcher. Why not? Or what is it? Missile launcher, I guess they call the Tau. I'm not a Tau player, so I don't know all these names. So again, enough water to get the decal off the paper, off the transfer sheet. And then there. And then just move it around, try to get it positioned right. And then don't touch it anymore. Now with the decals in place, I would leave the miniature standing overnight. Uh, you really need to make sure they're completely set in place until you continue painting. It's horrible to have them lined up perfectly and then hit it with a brush. And I also want to weather the decals a little bit to make them look a bit rougher, like this battle seat has been used quite a bit before. And then especially it's important to just leave them there, don't touch them, leave the miniature standing overnight at least, and just continue with them in your next painting session. So it's the next day and it's time to roughen up some of these decals. And here I got a perfectly new razor sharp hobby knife and I'm just gonna scratch off little bits and pieces of these decals. And I'm trying not to do too much because otherwise you just lose the whole decal. And if you scratch too much, you scratch off the base layer and you just get down to the primer. Which on his helmet of course makes no difference because this is the base layer, the primer. Uh, but over here, let's say on his leg, I'm just gonna gently scratch off little bits of the decal here on the side and leave out some of the Jokero orange that's beneath it. And the other way to rough up decals is to just take some of the base layer and stipple that onto there. That's also fine. Uh, this way I just have a little bit more control. I find that stippling with the sponge kind of covers up the whole decal really quickly and this is just as quick. Now I want the miniature to be made out of two different materials. See. The armor plating and so on should be ceramics because whenever Tao want more armor they probably have really great technology that gives you cheaper, lighter but super sturdy ceramic plates. They don't just slab on another piece of iron like the Imperium would. But at the same time over here they have this sort of frame of the miniature and I would make that metallic. So here I've got some flayed one flesh with a little dry brush and I'm just going to start hitting all the edges of these ceramic plates. And that will make it uh, look a little bit worn, a little bit chipped. Uh, at the same time, it's a good highlight and it will make these edges stand out a little bit more. I'm using a dry brush right now and just sort of quickly going over the miniature and hitting it here and there and everywhere. And this is a very quick way of simulating some battle damage. You can do a nicer form of battle damage that is much better looking, but costs a lot more time. And that is using a little sponge and dabbing it on. And I'll show you how that works too. So here's a little sponge and I'm just gonna dab on little bits and pieces over here. And you get much rougher look, you get much more random look, but it takes quite a bit more time than using a dry brush and quickly going over the mini everywhere. But this does look better. So depending on how much time you wanna spend on your minis, uh, maybe for your battle suit, you take out the sponge and do some of the stippling, but for your breachers, you know, 10 man squads, you just use a quick dry brush because on those smaller miniatures, you're not really gonna see much of this anyway. You're not gonna see this detail. On here, I should show you, it's perfectly fine to hit the red as well because the red is probably painted on after the orange. And so this way you still have this impression that it's the same material. It has the same base layer, the same sort of material that is revealed when you get deeper scratches. And let's just keep going all over the miniature. Some over here as well. Well, this is still way too clean. So personally, I use the dry brush on most of my miniatures because it's just faster. But if I have a character or I have a big monster or vehicle, I bring out the sponge and yeah, it just takes a bit more time. So those ceramic plates are now done. Time to dry brush some of this brown with Iron Warriors. And Iron Warriors is one of the darkest metals you can get from Games Workshop. And if you just lightly dry brush all over it, you'll keep that brown color from the contrast wildwood but it will start looking like metal instead of looking like brown plastic. And that's exactly what I want. So now when I'm finished, you'll have a miniature that is basically made out of two different kinds of materials. And all you have to do, whoa, there it goes, flying away already. Uh, all you have to do is just dry, dry brush with two different highlighting paints. So one's metallic, the other one isn't. And then everything that's dry, dry brushed with metallic will have this metal shine and all the rest will instantly look not metallic even though you know all you did was use some acrylic paint and then after all the weathering is done with the iron warriors it's time for a wash for the whole miniature and i am using agrax earthshade because again we're working with warm colors here all of its browns oranges reds 
and the Agrax Earth Shade will tone all of it down, but also tie it all together. Just try not to hit any of the white parts of the miniature, because that's just gonna turn it brown. But all of the red, the orange, all of it, and ideally, you finish after this, you don't even need to highlight anymore. That was the goal here. Start with a very bright orange, start with bright red, and then darken it all with Agrax Earth Shade, so that you don't have to highlight, and you still end up with a nice Tau Ochre. <laughs> So after the Agrax Earthshade is dried, he looks like this. And he looks rough, he looks dirty, exactly how I want my guys to look. This is not something that just dropped down on the planet, he is there to fight, and he has been fighting for a while. There's battle damage all around, and the orange now looks more like the ochre that Tau originally come with. Now I want to pick out just a few details uh, on the weapons and in his face. And I'm going to try and make them glow nice and blue. So here I've got Apothecary White. And I'm trying to drop some droplets into these recesses on the gun. And the reason I'm using Contrast Apothecary White is because it will seep into the recesses naturally. So if you just drag a brush along, it will automatically go into those recesses. And you don't have to worry too much about the fact that you're hitting the top parts because with the Apothecary White, it just doesn't show that bright. And then when this is dry, I can add some other colors to make this sort of glow. So now I do the same thing, but with contrast frost hard. And this is a bright blue contrast paint. And once this is finished and dried, this will look kind of glowy. I use this stuff for my power weapons on a bunch of other videos as well. And it works great. As long as the base layer is nice and white, you get a good result. And as final step for the gun, I just dry brush a little bit of black over the barrels. Now these fusion blasters, I'm sure they produce a lot of heat. And so a little bit of charring on the weapon makes sense from my point of view. And for the finishing touch, the lens gets first a base layer of silver and a drop of soulstone blue on top of that. So the combination of the silver and the soulstone blue will make it look like it's a blue glass that is really nice and shiny. And after basing, this is what the little crisis suit looks like. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I try not to highlight too much anymore because it just saves a lot of time if you can skip it. And using these bright colors, the bright orange, the bright red as a base, and then washing it with Agrax Earth Shade gets you very close to the Tau Ochre that the Tau Sept is painted with, and without all the extra effort. And this way also it looks a bit rough, it looks a bit damaged, there's some chipping of the paint, there's some scratching of the metal, and there's some rough dirt from the Agrax Earth Shade. Overall, a really quick and easy paint scheme that you can easily do a load of battle suits with in no time. If you enjoyed this video, maybe check out this one here as well.